Hi, I'm Ben Pearson with Rosa Tracker, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how SpaceX is going to refuel their new rocket, Starship, formerly known as Big Falcon Rocket, BFR, on the surface of Mars. Now, SpaceX was following very much in the history of the Direct Mars program. The Direct Mars program was created by Robert Zubrin. The idea was you don't have to take all of the rocket fuel that you need to Mars and then ship it back home. You can take just enough equipment to manufacture the fuel while you're on Mars, and that will allow you to do a much cheaper and easier mission in many ways. And it reduced the cost of a manned mission to Mars significantly, making it way less complex. Now, Let's talk about how SpaceX is planning on doing this, because there are a couple of differences. The big difference is the Direct Mars program originally envisioned talked about taking all of the hydrogen with you to Mars, because hydrogen doesn't weigh very much, and using the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere of Mars to produce the methane and oxygen, similar to the methane and oxygen that Starship will use to return home. How does it work? Well, the key thing is the Sabatier process, which takes hydrogen and carbon dioxide and mixes them together at a high temperature in the presence of a catalyst and will produce methane and water. This is an exothermic reaction, which means that it will produce more energy than it takes to put in there and thus can keep going forever. You can think of a fire as an example of an exothermic reaction. Once you get it started, as long as you have fuel and you're not going crazy with it, you'll be able to keep it going indefinitely. So the big question from there is, is where do you get the hydrogen? Well, I already mentioned that the direct Mars plan originally called from taking hydrogen from Earth, but it turns out there's a better source of this hydrogen that's available. And that hydrogen is on the surface of Mars itself. Now, you're not going to find gaseous hydrogen directly on the surface of Mars itself. Where you're going to find it is the same spot that we commonly find it on Earth, which is water. We know there's water on the surface of Mars. It's been proven pretty consistently through the years. In fact, it's kind of a running gag in the number of times that NASA's proved water is on Mars. But there's water there. The easiest way to get it is to dig up some of the dirt in the more water-rich areas of the planet and heat it up, and you will produce water. We've seen this uh, from a number of experiments, the Phoenix lander in particular, but some of the other ones have done this as well. Now, how is it, once we actually have this water, that we convert the water into hydrogen and oxygen? Well, you could use electrolysis. But that is an endothermic reaction, meaning it takes more energy than it puts in there. So it's going to take a lot of energy. So how much energy is it going to take? Well, let's talk, first of all, how much energy it's going to take to get the water in the first place. And the estimates, as calculated by the Space Review, is about 2 gigawatt hours to provide the 240 tons of methane that are required. Sounds like a lot, and it is. But we'll get there in a moment. Once you have the water, converting that into methane will take another approximately 4 gigawatt hours of energy to create the methane. This partially includes using some of the water, breaking it back into hydrogen and oxygen, and bring it through the process. Now, you will have some oxygen produced through this process, but you will not have nearly enough for the optimum mixture of methane and oxygen to provide the combustion to get you off of the planet. So you have to produce some more oxygen somehow. How are you going to do that? Well, the third important process is taking carbon dioxide, splitting off one of the oxygen atoms, combining it with another oxygen atom where you have pure oxygen, you take the carbon monoxide that's left, you vent it out into the atmosphere, and you'll have more oxygen. Okay, this is fantastic. Well, how much energy is that going to take? Well, that is another endothermic reaction, and therefore it's going to take some energy, and that energy is about 6 gigawatt hours. 
So we're getting to be at 12 gigawatt hours. Well, what else do we need to do? Well, we need to take the air that's coming from outside and compress it somewhat because the atmosphere on Mars is really thin. We also need to take the methane, sort it out, put that through the fuel tank, and it needs to be compressed as well, and we need to keep it cool. All that adds another roughly 4 gigawatt hours for a total of approximately 16 gigawatt hours of energy needed. How much electricity is that? Well, it's about the amount that 1,600 homes use on the United States. So, you know, the town where I grew up, Holton, Kansas, has about 4,000 people, so it's probably enough to power a fairly small town such as that. We have all of this fuel that's generated, but we don't have to use all of it at once. We have some fairly lengthy period of time to create it. Now, there are three different time periods that I could talk about. The first plan, which is Elon Musk's plan, which is to have the astronauts put out the equipment to manufacture the fuel and then use this to get home. Now, I'm going to assume that only one of the starships is going to be sent home. There's going to be actually six of them, two of them for the initial mission that are containing cargo only, and two cargo only and two passenger starships that are sent for a total of six that will be on Mars at the time where this is sent out. Okay, so what will these people do? Well, they'll go to Mars, they'll stay there about 450 days, and they'll return home. In reality, they'll probably stay a little bit longer because they'll probably take a slightly quicker trajectory to get to Mars and a slightly quicker trajectory to get home from Mars. But let's go with 450 days to give them a little bit of wiggle room in case something happens. So that 450 days means that they'll need about 1.5 megawatts of energy capacity 24-7 during that time period in order to produce the rocket fuel to get home. Okay, what are some other possibilities? Well, we know there are two cargo missions that are going to be sent there 26 months earlier. That 26 months comes out to be 780 days. So when you do the math there, it takes about 500 kilowatts of energy to produce the rocket fuel to get home, much, much less. There's a third time period that I came across, which is the Robert Zubrin plan, which is to have the rocket sitting on Mars, fully refueled before the astronauts leave from Earth. How long will that take? Well, that's about 590 days. So that'll take about 1.15-ish megawatts of constant energy in order to produce the fuel to get home in that amount of time. Okay, so we have these three different time periods. Well, let's go with the most pessimistic, which is the plan that Elon Musk had. That is 1.5 megawatts of power generation needed on the surface of Mars. Now, he wants to use solar power, so let's talk about solar power specifically. How much energy can you actually get from Mars? Well, the amount of sunlight that gets to Mars is less than it is on Earth. But the solar powers are a little bit more efficient because solar panels work better when it's cooler. So there's some mixture there. We're going to make a couple of assumptions. We're going to assume 25% efficiency in the solar panels. We're going to assume 25% efficiency due to the time of day and take the average solar radiance from Mars and put that all together. And we need about... 26,000 square meters of solar panels. That sounds like a lot, but it's only about 160 by 160 meters squared. So a little bit bigger than a baseball field, but definitely less than a baseball stadium. Okay, so what other things do we need to take into account? Well, the astronauts aren't going to be able to set up everything on the very first day they get there. Also, there's going to be some storms where some of the lights blocked out for as long as a month, like happened with Opportunity recently. And all of that's going to really eat into the time slot. So let's assume instead of 
26,000 meters. Let's go with 40,000 meters. So a 200 meter by 200 meter square, maybe the size of an actual stadium roughly. Okay, that's a fair bit bigger, but it's still somewhat reasonable. Well, how much will all of this weigh? The average weight per square meter of solar panel for space rated solar panels is about two kilograms per meter squared. So that 40,000 meters squared is going to be about 80 tons, 80 metric tons of solar panels. Is that doable? Well, yeah, it actually is somewhat reasonable. The cargo capacity for a single starship is about 100 tons. So you could fit all of them into a single starship and you would be good. Now, how are they actually going to do this? Well, they're not going to put all of them into one. The way I figure, they're probably going to set up some level of redundancy. I'm going to say two of the starships are going to land in a place where either their cargo was not usable, or it's broken, or they failed to land, or something like that. But two of them are completely out of the picture for some reason. So we need to have a 50% redundancy on top of the 50% for the amount of time it takes to set the solar panels up and so on and so forth. Okay, so that means we need to put about 20 tons of solar panels into each one of the six missions that are going there. Is that doable? Yeah, it's totally doable. It's going to take a lot of work. The first people to land on Mars, they're probably going to take a couple of days just to get used to being in gravity after having been in zero gravity for a couple of months. They're probably going to take a couple of days to do all of the first to set a flag and, you know, give some big grand speech and PR. And then they're going to have to get to work. Within two weeks of landing on Mars, a good chunk of the crew that's there is going to be setting up solar panels. And they're going to have to do this probably over the course of a month or two or maybe even longer, until they have this plant manufacturing the rocket fuel that they need to be able to get back home. Now, once they've got all this set up, they'll probably be able to fuel two starships between the time that the first one will leave and the time that the second one will come back. So they'll be able to return two of them home if they need to, and there'll probably be enough solar panels in the next set of missions to make yet another one of these. But it's going to take a long time. I don't expect more than one starship to come home in the initial group of six that are sent, at least initially. Eventually they might all come home, but not at first. And overall, it very well could work. I look forward to seeing what SpaceX will come up with. And I'll admit, when I started doing this, I wasn't really sure the math was going to work out for SpaceX, but it turns out that solar power is a viable option. Nuclear power would be a lot easier. You'd only need to launch one nuclear reactor. Even the smallest commercial nuclear reactors on Earth provide enough power to meet the life support needs and generate the fuel that will be needed in order to get back to Earth quite safely with huge amounts of margin. But Elon wants to use solar power and it turns out that it actually could work. It'll probably be expensive. Space rated solar panels are expensive, but if you're making 80 tons worth of them, I have to imagine the price is going to go down pretty significantly. Thank you guys much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.